and welcome to Tech Done For You's Expert Interview Series. I'm your host, Gina Decker, and I am JVIC's newest tech guru. And I am here with Kathy Alice Brown, who is an SEO wizard. She um, is an absolute expert in this field. I'm going to read off her bio in case you're not familiar with what she does, but she is absolutely awesome. And so I'm very excited that she's kicking off the interview today. So uh, yes. blush. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I haven't embarrassed you too much, but uh, <laughs> all right. Kathy Alice Brown is an SEO consultant and copywriter who helps her clients maximize their website's online performance. Kathy is a Silicon Valley veteran having held various leadership positions in IT and web marketing. As an SEO consultant, she has helped many clients with site migrations, traffic loss recoveries, and getting out of the Google penalty box, as well as with content marketing and content creation product projects. She holds three digital marketer certifications, including customer acquisition specialist, customer value optimization specialist, and search marketing specialist. So welcome, Kathy. I am so happy that you are here to kick off this interview series. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And oh, by the way, congratulations on your new um, crown of, or, or maybe, I don't know, crown or whatever you want to call it, of being the tech guru of JVIC. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. The geek is in. <laughs> so uh, we are uh, we are coming with all of the expert tips today, starting with um, SEO. And so anything that I don't um, absolutely know everything about, I am uh, you know starting this interview series mainly to uh, have a supplement, you know, ex extra information, you know, um, and uh, and definitely Kathy. I mean, you know the most about SEO out of all of my colleagues and friends. <laughs> and so um, yeah, so let's get start started. Um, like, so what is SEO for people who don't Yeah, know? starting with the definition is probably a really good idea. Okay, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And, you know, the short answer, <laughs> the short answer is that it's the art and science of getting your site to rank well in the Google search results. And, you know, Google is the main player. I mean, if you rank well in Google, you'll probably rank fine and Bing and some of the other um, search engines out there, but we tend to mostly focus on Google. And now I'm gonna get a little bit deeper. You know, uh, seven years ago it was, boy, it's been that long. I made the transition from corporate IT to SEO consultant. And, you know, at that time, SEO, you know, in the online marketing landscape was really treated as this separate thing, you know. Oh, it's in the back room back there with all the plumbing. And some people go, oh, I want to go check that out. And so like, like me, <laughs> we'd open the door and go check it out. And some people went, oh, no, I don't want anything to be part of that. But you know, the search landscape has really evolved tremendously. And the best online marketing really takes a holistic view. Like you may be using SEO for getting traffic to your website, but it's really email marketing that you're using to actually convert your um, clients, customers, or whatever. And so, you know, when you look at your online marketing, you really need to think about it holistically as, and, and really have congruency across, you know, the messaging and, you know, who your target audience is, because it's the same people, the people who may come to your site, um, it may be that, you know, and then they convert and they're on their, your newsletter. Um, it's the same person. So, you know, all those things about knowing your target audience that applies for SEO as well as for online, you know, email marketing or social or Facebook ads or whatever tactic you're using. So yeah, there definitely needs to be congruency in the messaging. And, you know, what I think is really important for people to realize about SEO and Google is their ultimate goal is to have the best experience from the searcher. So if someone searches and they come to your site and they go, oh, this isn't what I want, or oh, this site, it's not clear. You know, these days there needs to be at least in one image on the page. 
you know, it's just this wall of text and it's not like broken up and easily scannable, you know, that person will probably leave. And it doesn't really matter how they got there, whether it was SEO, you know, whether it was social, whether it was, you know, from an email blast. And so that's what I mean by it's kind of holistic these days. A lot of things that are good for SEO will help you in other digital marketing disciplines as well. You know, if your site isn't compelling enough, nothing's going to work well. And so, yeah, so SEO has kind of its own little thing going on, but it also plays pretty well with the other digital marketing disciplines out there. Awesome. Yeah, that's a really good description. I know a lot of us are trying to do JV traffic, you know, which is just a different type of traffic, you know, from JV partners, but a lot of this stuff you know, still applies because like you said, you know, um, we're trying to convert those leads. <laughs> and so you right. know, the best way we can do it, you know, however we do it, you know, sometimes it's not just one tactic. Sometimes it's multiple tactics. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there are definitely differences between the different tactics, but in the end, it's about, do you know your target audience and do you have something they're interested in? You know, whether you're driving traffic through an email blast or you're doing SEO. Yeah, yeah. And so you mentioned a couple other search engines, but yeah, Google is the king. And so, you know, how, how did we get, you know, Google to like our website? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, Google is a black box. You know, one of the things coming from corporate IT, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a geek like you are. I'm, I'm very technical. And um, you know, I used to run um, an engineering team and, you know, if something was broken, it was pretty easy to figure out how to fix it. It might be, you know, it might even challenge you, but in generally, you know, you own that code. So, you know, eventually you'll figure out how to fix it. So, you know, as an SEO consultant, what I'm dealing with is a black box. You know, none of us really know exactly how Google works. And, um, and we'll get to kind of like best practices. So you really have to do best practices. Um, and yeah, I mean, but I think, you know, you know, and just getting to SEO basics, which is what I, I'm hoping we're going to be pretty much covering in this interview. Um, does your site come up when you search on your business name? Does your site come up when you search on your name? Um, if your site's not coming up at all, yeah, you would, yeah, you know, perhaps you need to optimize your about page a little bit. I was actually talking to someone this morning about that. And we said, I said, yeah, we should at least get your about page to show up when we search on your name. So, yeah, I mean, so those kinds of things are, you know, sort of the SEO basics. Um, the other thing I'm going to pass along as a tip, and this is a little bit more advanced, is there's this command I use a lot. Um, there's all sorts of commands that you can type right into the search engines. And one of them is site colon. So that's S-I-T-E and then the actual colon. And then you just put your domain name. So in my case, my blog's name is Webenso, W-E-B-E-N-S-O.com. So I would just do site colon Webenso.com, no spaces, and then see what comes up. Um, now, you know, if the listings, if you can see that, you know, the clickable blue links aren't very descriptive or, you know, it doesn't look like they have many keywords, well, then you know you have um, some work to do. And as you kind of page through the results, if maybe there's pages that you didn't know you had, you know, and they're, you know, maybe hello world if you're on WordPress, <laughs> you know, you might, I want to get, go ahead and delete those um, because, you know, that's just kind of pulling down the quality of your site and that's not really good for SEO. And if you see like this, you know, the same content repeated over and over again, that's also a problem. And, you know, you can find all sorts of problems just with that simple command and that will give you a clue um, as well as kind of searching on your, your brand. It, you know, if you see kind of a mess when you do that site colon, then Google is probably not very happy with your site. Oh, cool. Yeah, I didn't actually know that. So site colon and then your website URL. So that's correct. Perfect. Yeah, that's a that's a really good tip. Thank you for that. So, uh, you know, I know that we've um, together sometimes, you know, critique clients websites and, right. you know, uh, like what's the worst problem that you've seen with somebody's website? Well, yeah. <laughs> So I've seen a lot of problems. Um, you know, some really bad problems are caused by 
people changing around their websites, like, you know, don't, you know, read, oh, I don't like that URL, I'm gonna just change it. Well, you know, don't do that. Or moving to a new domain or changing their domain. And, you know, the key here is if you're gonna do those kinds of changes, you need redirects. Um, and a redirect, the one, the one of the ways I explain a redirect is let's say you, you, you know, you live in a house, you have an address, you get your mail, and then you decide to move. Well, what you do is you go to the post office and you submit a forwarding address, right? So that your mail knows, the post office um, knows to, to deliver your mail to that new address. And a redirect is just like that. You're tell, it's, if you've set one up, you're telling Google, hey, this page has moved. And, you know, Google being the post office here, and that can, you know, handle all sorts of problems. If you're gonna change things drastically, um, either get someone like me to help you out or just, you know, learn something about redirects because, um, yeah, that's, I see those kinds of problems all the time. Um, I had a recent client, I have this just, 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 just this month, I had a client who got hacked and she lost all her traffic and I was fortunately able to get back her traffic, but it was a pretty bad episode. But I mean, when it comes to the worst problem I've ever seen, particularly if we're just talking about a small site, you know, sites under a thousand pages, um, you might remember this one. You know, I was helping you with one of your clients and, you know, she had actually done some work on keywords and added them to her pages, but she had two major problems. The first is her pages, literally what she had done was taken all her brochures, all her marketing collateral and scanned them in and you know, they were images and she posted them as images to her site. So, I mean, the site looked good, but they were actually images. They weren't actual text. And yeah, Google's gotten better at like kind of understanding images, but you know, you got, if it's, if it's text, it's got to be text. It's not, you don't want it to be like part of your image. So that was kind of one big problem. But the other one was even worse. Um, she had set up her domain. I mean, what she had done, and this might be something that some of, you know, your, your listeners might have done, is, you know, she actually had a wordpress.com site and she had set up a domain to point to that wordpress.com site. And it was just done wrong. So whenever you went to any of your pages, they all had the exact same URL. It was always her homepage. And, you know, that's really bad for SEO because what that means is that Google is only gonna see one URL, so it thinks it only has one page on your site and that page seems to be always changing, so it's probably gonna have problems figuring out exactly how to rank that page. And so that was particularly, that was really a bad problem. Um, and it was really interesting for me to experience that because, you know, I had a little bit of an attitude of like, oh, you know, particularly because I used to work on really large corporate sites. Oh, those small sites, you don't worry, have to worry so much about those. It's these big, larger, more complex, you know, corporate sites that, you know, can have really bad problems. Well, not true. <laughs> Some of those, you know, even if you 10 page site, sometimes they can be really screwed up. And that, that was kind of a little bit of an eye opener for me. It's like, oh, well, maybe I should start helping people out with these smaller sites. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely remember, you know, that and, and it was, you know, um, an artist who was also a business owner. And so, you know, I think part of it is that she was very visual. And, right. um, and even, you know, as you're building a WordPress site, you know, like you mentioned, like, you know, there's that, that sample post that, you know, WordPress puts in and it says, hello world. And there's, you know, pretty much, you know, they're just showing you how to do a post. And if you don't, you know, remember to delete that, then it looks weird. And then also, you know, naming the pictures, you know, if it is an Right. Image. She hadn't done much of that either. So not only was, you know, the entire page, just this one image, um, I mean, it looked beautiful. You're right. She was an artist. She had, I mean, her visuals were lovely. They were beautiful. But yeah, I mean, when you, um, and here, I mean, we'll, you can run through a couple of really quick tips. I mean, um, when you add an image to your blog or your page, you want to set something called an alt tag. And, you know, if you're, we're, most CMSs like WordPress, it's pretty clear. It'll say like alt tag or alt or something like that. So when you're like um, naming the image, you want to you, you set that alt tag 
um, to describe what the picture is. Um, if you can get a keyword in there, even better. And before, now before you even upload the, the, the um, picture or image into WordPress or whatever CMS you're using, also I would highly recommend you rename the file name from you know, DCS 97 whatever to something more descriptive, like you know, pick, you know, woman running. I mean, you don't have to get too fancy about it. Just you know, rename it to something that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, those are definitely um, you know that, and that helps SEO because um, the alt tag. This is a little bit of a history about it. It was originally created for the visually impaired because they can't see the images. So that alt tagger, when a screen reader is reading, you know, through the web page for them, that alt tag tells them what the, the image is. And since search engines, although they've gotten better, um, they really don't have a, they can kind of tell if it's a person, but they may not be able to tell that person's running. Um, and let's say you're doing a blog post on running and you know, you have a site about health or running or whatever you know, that word running is probably a keyword. So getting that into the alt tag is really important. Yeah, yeah, that's really, you know, super important too, you know, cause I even notice, you know, if I'm in a hurry on my own blogs, you know, or things like that, I'm like, I always, you know, even lead pages and stuff like that, if I can get a descriptive title in there, you know, it goes a long way to making it, you know, SEO friendly. So yeah, that's, that's super helpful. Yeah, and I mean, Lead Pages actually has, uh, they keep, they've changed their UI, so I always have to, I can't tell you exactly how to find it, but they have like SEO tags that you can, and, and you know, that's not, a, and even if you don't care about SEO at all, you still want to set that because your title tag, and a title tag is just a tag that's in your HTML source, but doesn't show on the page, but it actually shows up in the browser tab. So if you're doing a lead page, at the very least, go ahead and set your title tag because it, it will show up in the browser tag when someone has your lead page open. And, you know, that's just, just sort of, if it says something like welcome or lead page or even worse, if it has like you've repurposed the lead page and has your own old like offer on it, which I've seen, um, you know, making sure that's up you know, up to date and congruent with the rest of the page. I mean, those are just visual clues that really help reinforce like, oh yeah, this is a person who knows what they're doing. Um, their offer is legit. Yeah, I wanna take advantage of this. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely know. So if you're not sure, you know, where that is in your lead pages, you know, I know where the setting is. And so <laughs> reach out to me if you need help. But yeah, I mean, it's it's really literally just like a title area, you know, exactly. description for the search engine. And that's nice because I mean, you know, sometimes it's hard to find that in WordPress and sometimes there are plugins and stuff where you can put in more, you know, tags and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, well, you know, should all business owners kind of like invest in SEO or is this kind of just something that some of us should think about? Well, what I tell people, um, so SEO may not be your first strategy, but what I tell people, um, you should do the basics. Um, as I say, you, you do want to rank for your brand name. You do want to rank for your name. Um, and you know, as the point sort of circling back to the point I made yet earlier, you know, your site should have content that users like it's good for your SEO. It's good for your social. It's good for everything. So, um, maybe SEO tends to shine a little more light on the importance of having valuable content. Um, so maybe that's a reason to, you know, kind of do SEO or have an S, you know, have some consulting like an SEO consultant like myself. But yeah, I would say number one, there, there's, it really, I mean, there, SEO can be a really big topic. When we get to the basics, I'm gonna boil it down to three things. And those three things are, your site should have content that users like. Um, number two, the site should be well organized and have the appropriate meta tags with keywords. So people should be able to find things on your website. Like if you have a product section, that should be pretty easy to find. You know, your, your, your navigation should be well laid out. Um, you should have an about page. And you know, if the users can't find this stuff, well, the search bots can't either. So, I mean, again, it's good for both the search bots and the users. And when I say, you know, you should have meta tags with keywords, if you just do your title tags, 
like we were talking about with lead pages or if you're in WordPress using something like the Yoast SEO plugin to craft your title tags. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer you do a little bit more than that, but you know, just, you know, crafting your title tags to be really compelling and have keywords in them. You know, I would at least do that much on your website. And then finally, I would say the third thing is that um, you as a marketer, whether that's someone you hire or whether you're doing it, you're marketing yourself, your online marketing stuff, you should just be aware of the power of backlinks. Um, now, this is the basics, so we're not talking about actually doing things to get backlinks. I just, what I want you to just, is just be aware. And a backlink, of course, is a link from one site, another site to yours. And of course, there's a, it's the devils in the details, but you know, generally, if you have more links, that's better for SEO, although you know, depends on the site that's linking to you. And so if you're speaking at a conference, you know, maybe just make sure that there's a link to your website on the profile on the conference webpage. You know, oh, so-and-so is speaking, you know, she's giving a talk or he's giving a talk. You know, just make sure this is a link back to your website. And, you know, that's not necessarily building links. That's just having an awareness that, oh, this is a good thing for me to have. And so just keep your eye out for those types of opportunities. So that's number three. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and a lot of speakers, sometimes you'll be, you know, doing telesummits or giveaways and stuff, and it's good to have, you know, those links back to your site. Right, yeah. So, I mean, if, if the, it's just having that awareness of those types of opportunities. And yeah, just, just have that little thing in the back of your mind, like, oh, if I get backlinks, that's a good thing. That will help me rank, even if all I'm trying to do is rank my business name. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I'm going to post, you have a gift for people who have come to this presentation. So uh, techdoneforyou.com forward slash Kathy gift. Uh, can you describe what that is? Uh, is that the freebie? Yep, that's the freebie. Yes. Um, so I, I've kind of mentioned, you know, these, we, we talked about the worst problems. Um, so in the freebie, there's three checks you can do. And one of them is the site colon command. So if you, that sounded interesting to you, it's something you wanted to do and, and you just wanted to read or get a little more guidance on it, that's the first check. So, this, so all it is is like kind of a, a downloadable um, free report, but it's pretty short and sweet. It's just a checklist. There's three checks. It's something you can do really quickly. And the first one is the site colon command, but it's just a couple things for you to do to make sure that you know um, you don't see any major problems with your site's SEO um, and because if you do then you can take action to get it fixed so it's just a quick checklist for you to just do three checks to make sure your site is in good shape when it comes to SEO yeah cool I mean that's really helpful because you know we kind of you know sometimes I take really good notes but not everybody is you know able to do that so yeah there's the link for you I'm also going to post it in the Facebook group and you know in our our uh, you know replay update and then we have a really special offer real quick and it's a mini audit so can you tell people about that yes I can tell people about that um so yeah a lot of when I do SEO audits, um, it tends to be a lot more involved thing. And I really look at their key, I do keyword research, I look at their strategy. But you know, what I was thinking is, you know, particularly um, for people who, you know, they're not sure they want to invest that much money, um, is I, I put together what's called a mini audit. And um, I there's like three components to the mini audit. And the first is, you know, I will go through your site and check and make sure there's none of those like terrible lurking problems that we've talked about. Um, so that's, that's part one. Part two is I will actually look at the messaging of your site. So I do copywriting as well. Um, I tend not to leave with that because people know me more as an SEO consultant, but I've really discovered that I like copywriting. And so I, I, you know, I do email blasts for people, you know, I've done a lot of copywriting and, you know, as my time as an SEO consultant, particularly as I did link remediation, I've looked at thousands and thousands and thousands of websites. And so it can be really valuable for me to just take a quick look at like two of your pages, like your homepage or either your products or your about page and just say, you know, does this make sense to me? Is, um, is the messaging clear? 
So, and what I will do is I'll propose alternates. Um, so I'll take a look at that. And, um, you know, I was just doing that this earliest today and she had this really general tagline and it sounded great, but it was really general. And, you know, what it really came down to is that she was doing self-care. And I said, why don't you have the word self-care in your tagline? You know, so it's, it's like insights like that. And then the last thing is um, what I will ask you to do when you fill out the form um, is I'll ask, you, I'll ask you to just share your elevator pitch with me. And I'll give, what I'll do is I'll come back to you and I say, you know, for you, um, I think, you know, um, you know, JV and email marketing is probably your best um, way to, you know, do SEO. I mean, sorry, not SEO, but do digital marketing, or maybe SEO is a fit for you. It's, I'll give you kind of a take on what strategy I think you should focus on. And, um, you know, hope, because they, they're so, I, what I'm hearing over and over from people is they're overwhelmed. They don't know where to begin. They're really frustrated. They're tired of learning stuff. So what I'm going to hopefully do for you, which I'm pretty sure I can, is just give you, okay, I want you to go this way. I think that's your best shot. Um, you know, hey, maybe, um, you know, social is a really good place for you to hang out with and that's where you should get your clients. That's the kind of feedback I'll give you. Awesome. Yeah, that's really, really helpful. So if you guys are interested in, you know, the mini audit link I posted in the chat, I'll also uh, send an email. Um, I know that we're, we have about a minute or two for questions. Yeah, we're so, about out of time. So Sarah, uh, I, I know that Sarah, I'm just going to unmute you. Um, I know that she had a website in mind. Sarah, do you, um, do you feel comfortable sharing the website? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sharing what? Well, um, I did speak to GoDaddy last night, and my website is, I was going to actually uh, get a WordPress website, but it looks like mm -hmm. you really have to be hecky. So I'm going to be redoing mine. Um, what kind of questions could I ask? Yeah, here's my question. Imagine that somebody is really starting from scratch. You know, you have an old, tacky, homemade-looking website, and you're about to start fresh. So you can't really look at a person's site and say, change this and this, because there's nothing there. How can you help us? Before we make the mistake. Well, um, is it the same business? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, I mentioned earlier that, I mean, are you going to keep the same domain name or are you going to go for a new one? I have so many. It's a choice of any of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, um, you know, maybe um, a little bit of strategy about, you know, which domain you should go after, which domain name. Right. Um, that might be kind of the first step. Um, the second step is, yeah, you have this old tacky website, but if it's getting any kind of traffic whatsoever, um, we'll want to set up redirects just to redirect to the new website, um, just so you can capture, I mean, unless you really think the old website doesn't serve your brand at all, um, if it's getting some traffic um, that, you know, then you're, because if you don't do that, you're, then you really are starting from scratch. Why not leverage any kind of value we got from the old website by redirecting um, to the new? And it, it could be, you know, you go with the same URL, I'm um, same domain, and but your URLs will probably change, and so that's why you need redirects. Oh, okay. Would, that would be the and first also, thing. And also, what I'm suggesting is, you know, here you have there are a whole lot of us, you know, brand new, fresh in a way. Um, mistakeless, errorless websites because they're <laughs> innocent, you know. So you have a clean slate on which you can project all your expertise rather than helping us undo the mistakes we made. So what would be the difference in how you would approach it versus messing, fixing up all our messes? Got it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it really comes down to, and this is going to be true for any digital marketing you do online, is really nailing down um, who your avatar is and what your offer is. Um, and so, you know, understanding, you know, what social media, you know, your, your avatar hangs out on. I mean, are you, you know, is it better for you to be doing Pinterest or, you know, is Facebook what you should be doing? Um, so, you know, understanding what market, digital marketing channels are, you know, are you know doing the market research and and understanding what their common frustrations uh, um, are so you know I don't know your business so I'm, I'm really speaking in generalities which I prefer more examples but you know there's a site called answer the public 
And let's just say your keyword is alarm clocks. I, it, I probably isn't, but I'm just going to go with it. And you're selling alarm clocks. Well, um, if you're wanting to create some content to support your product pages, and you know that content could be used in social, it could be used in SEO, it could be even used in email blast, then you know what are you know you, you got to do some association there. It's like okay, alarm clocks are about getting up out of sleep. Um, what are sort of the, some of the challenges people have with you know transitioning from sleeping to a working day? I mean, you maybe you can do some tips around that. So you know, understanding what people are searching for, understanding you know what social media network they hang out in. Um, you know, it's really about doing some market research and seeing where you can get some traction with your site. Okay. I hope Great. that I hope that was. I, I mean, it's hard. It's, sometimes it's hard to answer in real generals because right. you know it, it really it really depends on whether you're selling a product or you're sell, selling a service. I mean, how you approach a service-based business versus product-based business can be different. And just one, one sort of personal question. Which do you prefer working with, you know, brand new sites that haven't, you know, starting fresh and advising the person how to do it right or fixing the ones that are uh, needing help? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, to be honest, um, I think I tend to shine a little better in fixing people's problems, um, partly because that's a lot of what I, a lot I've done. It's 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 I like to see, you know, if you're, if you have an old site, I'd, I'd really like to see the stats or if there's any traction with any kind of keywords on that site. Um, because, you know, it's a lot easier. It's like getting the plane off the ground is tough. It really is. Once the plane's off the ground, it's, it's easier to course correct. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, I haven't had clients that are more, you know, green field. Uh, but yeah, it just, I can make a difference so much quicker if, um, you know, they have some analytics I can take a look at, or, you know, they've tried certain, um, offers that have either worked or haven't worked. I mean, that's the thing about marketing. It's, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that work forever, you know, let's say you want to do a free report and they work forever and ever on it and they put it up and it doesn't work. Well, you may have to do a couple to really find the one that resonates with your target audience. Um, you know, I've seen cases where people have had a free report and, but they didn't convert. It resonated with their, with an audience, but it wasn't their target audience. So the people didn't convert. And until you get into action, none of this, you just don't have that data to make good decisions on. So you just have to start somewhere. Um, you know, People like me have seen, you know, can kind of maybe steer you in one direction or the other, but in the end, it, it really is about getting an action and course correction as you go along. Okay, great. I'm ready. Thanks. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Yes. Thank you. Gina, you're muted. Oh, sorry, I muted myself. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for, uh, you know, your questions and attending live. And thank you, Kathy. I know we're, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, about six minutes past uh, our yep. time. And so we're going to wrap up. Uh, but I will include, you know, that link techdoneforyou.com forward slash mini audit. Um, it's, you know, it's on sale right now. So that's cool. You know, it is on sale. I, you know, I normally sell that for um, $4.97. It's um, right now it's on sale for $3.97. It, um, that um, price should be good for maybe five days, um, but I think um, maybe six. So next Thursday is when I'm gonna return it back to the normal price. So um, that's, um, I know I should really make it scarce. So oh, you only have a day to get it. No, I'm, I kind of don't do that. So, um, because I'll probably just, you know, remind my list one more time that they can get it, you know, for three ninety seven. But yeah, so it'll be good for about six days, and then I'm gonna return it back to the um, the four ninety seven price. So yeah, you know, just because you know your genius listeners, um, you know, if if you guys, um, if this sounds like a fit for you, you know, give it a try. If um, you wanna just pick my brains, um, I'm always available to do hourly consulting. 
Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that kind of just do the big ticket packages. I don't, I don't do that. I, I do both. I do kind of bigger projects, but I will, I have a number of clients who just call me when they need me and I just do Allery consulting. So if that, is that good for you? We can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I really appreciate, you know, you um, kind of reaching out and giving this discount to my, my audience, because I know that, you know, there's a lot of people in JVIC who, you know, kind of, and even just on my own list and, you know, in my groups who are, you know, just starting out. And so they're, they're at all levels. And then there's some at, you know, larger, you know, mid or mid range, you know, so we're all at different levels doing this. And so that's like a really great deal. So I'm really excited about that. And I will be reminding you guys uh, about, uh, you know, that right before it expires <laughs> in case Case you need it. Um, and also, you know, the, uh, the free gift, I will uh, share that link again. So uh, thank you, Kathy, for joining us. I am so honored that you are the first expert speaker in this. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, who, I mean, do you want to tell us who else you got lined up? You got, a, you got got some other people lined up? Yeah, yeah. Next month, Ken Course is going to be talking oh, cool. about expertise. And so, you know, he he is a techie as well. And so I, I seem to have these people gravitate towards me. So, uh, yeah, te and Ken uh, actually does know Kathy, too. So uh, Ken's going to be uh, next month's speaker. And these are all 30-minute, you know, just kind of uh, pop-ins. You know, they're not going to be really long. Um, and then also the next speaker after that is somebody who who is, uh, her name is Barbara, and she's going to be helping us with how to protect our intellectual property online. So, uh, oh, that, that's a good topic. Topic, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, of course, and, and then, um, you know, if you have, know any other techie experts, you know, shoot them over to me, you know, if they'd like to, to be a speaker in the series. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And I know you've got a busy schedule, so I will let you go back to your day. Thank you so much, Gina. I really appreciate the um, opportunity to speak to people. And, you know, it's fun. It's always fun um, to, I mean, I like SEO, so I like talking about it. So just thanks for the opportunity. And ha everybody have a great Friday. Or, you know, um, if you're listening to this later on, then I hope the whatever day you're listening to this, you'll have a great day as well. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.